Implementing the WHO Surgery Safety Checklist is one more step towards reaching the safest surgery possible. The Safe Surgery Checklist ensures that the surgical team has all of the necessary information to optimize patient care. In this checklist, it ensures that there is a safety check done at three important times into the surgical procedure, before the induction of anesthesia, before the skin incision, and before the patient leaves the operating room. Implementing the checklist can be done in an efficient and effective way, and today we will show you how. Wrong site, wrong procedure, wrong patient are termed as never events by the Joint Commission, meaning these events should never happen. Implementing the safety check before induction of anesthesia can help prevent these events. At this time, the OR team will have a conversation with the patient to identify the patient's name, date of birth, and the surgical procedure that is going to happen. This is a chance to make sure everything is in place for the right patient, for the right procedure, at the right time. Hey, it's Dr. Torres, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Any last minute questions? No. My name's Michelle, I'll be the nurse in the room with you. My name is Kristen, I'll be the nurse and ethicist in the room. Can I see your armband? Can you tell me your first and last name? Amanda Roberts. Date of birth? April 5th, 1972. Do you have any allergies? No. What procedure are you having done today? I'm having a hysterectomy. Are we taking your ovaries? No. We have an update, we are ready to roll. All right. Sounds great. The safety check that takes place just before the skin incision is the timeout. During the timeout, this is a chance for the operating room team to communicate about the procedure that's about to take place. Are we ready to time out? Yes. This is Ms. Amanda Roberts. Date of birth is April 5th, 1972. The proposed procedure is a total laparoscopic hysterectomy. We are keeping ovaries. I'll need my trocars and the harmonic scalpel. She doesn't have any significant comorbidities or past surgical history. Should be average difficulty, EBL, 100 cc's, duration two hours. Has she received her antibiotics? Yes, yeah, she received uh, two grams of ANSEF. The anesthetic plan for this case is a general anesthetic with an ET tube. The uh, airway was uneventful, uh, mask-wise, before induction. And then we're planning on extubating her deep, sending her to phase one recovery. We have two IVs, both of them are working fine. Hemoglobin hematocrit are both okay, but we do have a blood consent with two units of pack cells available. The analgesic plan is for IV narcotics intraoperatively as well as post-op. Patient has no allergies. Fire risk is light cord, booby, and chlor prep. My name's Michelle, I'll be the circulator in the room. I'm Dr. Torres, the surgeon. Matt Brown, CRNA. Dr. Hart with anesthesia. Dijon, scrap tech. If anyone has any concerns during the case, please speak up. It is also an important time to identify any challenges that are expected to the case. This allows us to be prepared and to prevent any potential issues. The post-op debrief is the safety check that takes place just before the patient leaves the room. The debrief allows the surgical team to go over the procedure and to discuss any potential opportunities for improvement. The surgeon will reiterate the case that was done, describe the specimen, anesthesia has an opportunity to discuss any concerns that they had during the procedure, and then the OR team can discuss if they saw any opportunities to improve. Are we ready to debrief? Yes. The performed procedure was a total laparoscopic hysterectomy with a bilateral salpingectomy. Specimens include cervix, uterus, and fallopian tubes for permanent. It went as expected. She can go to med surge. Foley can come out at the end of the case. Nothing was missing that could have made the procedure better for instrumentation and equipment. All right, so this was a general anesthetic. We had about 1,300 of a crystalloid. Urine output was about 220 milliliters and estimated blood loss was about 100. Thank you, everyone. I think it went very well. Does anyone have any input that could have made this case better? No. no. Doing the patient safety checklist in a safe and efficient method is something that we can all achieve. And hopefully we've demonstrated that for you today.